you know, I've preached about 20 years. Do you know how many sermons there are? Thousands, right? Literally. But this is, I'm quite scared. Every second month I come up here. <laughs> As you can see this, all right? So this is kind of a testing moment too. But can somebody give me some water, right? I need to regroup myself. Here we go. All right, children. Oh, thank you. Pastor Joshua is a bit nervous again. Do you know what today is? Today is, well, it's a family service day. So we really want to speak to you and we want to talk to you first so that and, uh, you can really be together with the family and the mothers and fathers and we're going to all join together. All right, so small children and big children, can you pay attention? But remember last, last, last time we did it, I measure really failed, or actually in a modified and a different experiment. There. But I got a different experiment today. All right, it's going to work today. Do you know what this is? Oh, egg, that's right. <laughs> it's giant egg. But it's a bit special. What's the difference in this? It's a green also, right? And, yes. Big egg. But you know what I'm trying to say. Today's what today is? Is Easter. Okay. All right. Everybody says Easter. And this is Easter egg. I always wonder what, what we have inside the Easter egg. So that's a quiz. What do we have in the inside of Easter egg? Okay. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'll give you some clue. You hear the sound? Oh, okay. All right. Easter egg is inside Easter? Okay, I don't get what you're saying. All right. <laughs> Can't believe what? Chocolate is inside. Ooh. Who else? Yes, yeah. Okay, Easter egg, smaller Easter eggs is inside small in an Easter egg. Wow, that is very clever. Anyone else? I'll give you sound. You have to hear the sound. <laughs> yes. A toy? Not really. Okay, what is it? Stuff. <laughs> Typical Bernie Stone sense, all right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, it's not. Yes, yes. Huh? Something in my arms? Not really. Okay, I'll show you what. So, let's say so, uh, for the first time in the history of mankind. That's what symbolized something, definitely. <laughs> we're going to actually open the what inside the Easter egg. Okay. This is how we're going to open it. There's no kind way. And there's no gentle way. It's a biblical truth that we have to open it and we have to violently open it. That's what the Bible says. One. Everybody go. Three. On three, we're going to hit it. One, two, three. <laughs> wow. Inside the insect, there's nothing. What does that mean? It means Easter is all about empty tomb. When Jesus, oh yeah. see, you expect something would be in there. People expect inside the tomb something should be there. That thing, right? But it wasn't. Nothing was there. The things that rolled off, rolled off. You know that it symbolized that the stone rolled away. That's what it meant. <laughs> so what happened when Jesus died on the cross? They put him inside the tomb, and Mary went to the tomb and found nothing in there. And Bible said it actually Jesus risen again. Hey, we haven't finished the, the good part. Is, 
Yo, Agashi, get thunder. <laughs> the good part is this one. Do you know that Jesus didn't die? You know, where was he? Where, where did he go? And can I have a two kids to come up and help me to unwrap this? All right. You know, actually, uh, Noah and, and Elias. Oh my goodness, my niece. Uh, all right, all right, okay. Come on up. Go, kick, 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 kick. We don't have much time. All right, give him the, give him the big collab off. All right, good, good. <laughs> all right, we're going to count three. And this will show something. Be careful, right? Be very careful. All right, everybody count. One, two, three. So Jesus is a... <laughs> Raise it! <laughs> All right. All right, you can go down there. Get off. Oh, don't, don't. <laughs> So today is a day that we celebrate the empty tomb, the day that Jesus is risen again. Let's give a big celebration clap. Yay. <laughs> Woo. All right. Do you know what that means? It means all of you guys, like young and old, every one of you who believes in him will be exactly following the same suit. We will rise again as well. We will be resurrected. We will be victorious and the death has no sting on us. Amen. Bless you. <laughs> How about we pray? Let's pray. Father God, today we want to celebrate when Jesus died on the cross and the, the, the tomb was empty. And I pray, Lord God, would you continue to remind us, our children especially, they may know you who is not dead. They may know you who is not far away. They may know you as alive, close, intimate, and you are here with us and seeing hearing every word, every prayer that we have today. And I pray for your hands, every one of us in this room. Bless them, Lord. Bless their life, Lord God. So they will not depend on the things of this world they will not depend on the circumstances but they will depend on the truth that's spoken into our lives we thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen amen children can you just go around and give an easter egg to your parents right as a little gift come on come on are we gonna sing a song yeah let's go clap for the hour. Beautiful children. You can go now. You can go to Easter hunting. It's egg hunting or whatever treasure hunting, whatever you're you doing today. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. 
Sorry, all the parents, you have to deal with these hyperactive children because they have too much sugar today. All right, all right. Thank you. As the worship team is at my behind me, and they came a bit early, but it's okay. But can I just ask you, open your Bible quickly, and I will just go through it. It's going to be the shortest sermon that you ever heard. All right. All right. The passage is from John 20, 1 to 10. Let me read it to you. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they had laid him. Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first and stooped to look in, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. He did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen clothes lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded up in the place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And the disciples went back to their homes. Amen. The simple description of the um, what happened on the day Jesus raised. I think there's a few things that I can just uh, highlight it in my heart when I was reading it, and uh, it really helps me to understand what this resurrection means to us. I know. I know the resurrection and the theology behind it and the history behind it. I talked about it all the time and we hear all the time. We even have the children's story of it. But my question today is that what does that mean to us today, people living in 21st century? I know resurrection is a belief that we have that we will receive in the when we uh, final consummation of, of, of the 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 final plan of God, that's we all going to rise before the Lord, right? And that is our truth. That's the truth that we believe. But what does that mean to us? I need you to sort of take you all of you guys back to 2,000 years ago. We try to understand where these disciples and Mary were at to understand this. Can you imagine these people just lost the very person they so dearly loved and followed for three years, but also not just followed him, but they literally bank on him all the things. They put all their bas- uh, the eggs on his basket that he thought they thought that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one to, to save and deliver the Israelite and the disciples who have loyal to them, him, will be, they will have that, that, that kind of like an authority and the, the, the rightful seed as the followers of Jesus. But that didn't happen. He died. The death of Jesus, by the way, is nothing new. It shouldn't be new to them. But, you know, I think that every human being taking death, you know, when that comes to them, it shocks them. It shocks them. When I first time witnessed death, was my, uh, the, when I was, uh, I think, the, the what, sixth, no, no, seventh grade. I'm sorry, I think it's the ninth grade. And the, she was seventh grade. And she was a pianist. And we were doing this, uh, and I, a boys kind of a uh, choir thing that I uh, thing. And I, um, we, we, our friends start to have this kind of a, uh, 
what you call the uh, a cappella group. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of weird. Yeah, but we, I did all those things, you know. And she was a pianist, and she was. Uh, I still remember her name is Jeannie, and she she was one of the, you know, the girl who brought our team together. You know, we loved her as a sister. And one day I uh, got a call that she had a car accident, and she died instantaneously on the road. The first death experience that ever I had. There was a funny thing about death. The what shocked me was the, the finality of death. The idea, the person who I used to see, who person that I used to talk to the yesterday, no more. I can't see her, I couldn't talk to her, it's gone, that she is not there anymore. That that was huge shock and it really shattered us you know, deep inside of our heart. Some of you guys lost your close people, your family member, your mother, or probably your brother and sister for one thing or another. Losing someone through death is actually quite traumatic, not just because of the, the person, but the, remain, the people who remain. Yeah? Complete lostness, separation. And that finality in, in a way that I can't really see this person anymore. And this disciple and Mary was going through that exactly the same. But do you know theologically as well? Whole humanity has been going through this for thousands of years since the fall. I want you to understand this. This is very important truth that you need to get this. The separation between God and man because of the sin, the division that we have right now, it will bring us the experience that only the death can give to us. We are living dead spiritually without God, in our lives, we are dead. That's what the Bible said. The, the, the penalty of sin is the death. That's why we die physically. And that's why we experience deathness. Consequence of the sin. Everything that you've done in the past, everything that you're doing, everything that you made mistake, the, 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 the flaws that you have and the struggles you have is a result of the sin. And that's a sign of, symptom of the Death, separation, God and us. Many people even now, they leave God because they simply can't see God, right? I don't see this God. Where is he? So they leave God. And it is normal because there's a death in our DNA. Now, there's a reason why you and I are afraid sometimes. That's why you and I be sad. That's why you and I be despair and discouraged. Even if you are Christian, you and I go through this in life journey, through our failures, through our downs, through our, through our just dark experience. We go through all that is because we're living in the world of death, right? So, what happened on the day Jesus rose again? It changes everything. Remember last week's sermon, I talked about redemption. How I talked about that God was showing his color throughout the Old Testament, how he wants to redeem people again, 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 again. And Ruth is one of the clear examples that how God would redeem people. And today is the final, the highlight of his redemptive journey that God rose again to Jesus from the, from the tomb, and the tomb is empty, which means the death no more. Death will not have a claw on you anymore. The day will come that you will not be governed and overcome by the death anymore. What he's saying is that basically do not be afraid of dying. Do not be afraid of what is to come because Jesus has risen. I'll tell you just one point today and to finish it off. There are three reasons why we are afraid and three reasons why, how we can overcome our fear. I think number one reason is this. 
the, the disciple knew about Jesus and all that stuff. But verse 9, it says, yet they did not understand the scripture. What is it? Ignorance. Ignorance. In other way, truthlessness. Truthlessness. You don't know the truth. But you probably say, Pastor Joshua, but I know the truth. I heard about this. I've heard it from all my life. No, no, no. That is an information. That is just a fact. The fact is in front of you. Like Jesus died on the cross. That's a fact. Truth is an interpretation of the fact. And people will see the same Jesus on the cross, right? And they'll come up with a different interpretation. Some people say, well, there's a criminal died on the cross. Some people say, oh, there's a cult leader died on the cross, right? Some people will say, well, the Jewish people, the, like a, a Jewish person who, who want to liberate, liberate the, the Jewish, uh, um, uh, Jewish country again, they died on the cross. They come up with that answer, interpretation. Do you make, does it make sense? But disciples of Jesus, so that, and they should have got the different answer from it. And that is the truth. Fact is a fact. Truth is a correct interpretation of the fact. Now, if you know the truth, what Jesus done on the cross, and what this empty tune means, there will not be fear. They will not be afraid. And they, the Bible says they didn't understand that. And later, Jesus showed up. And they finally got it. They encountered Jesus. Oh my goodness, Jesus, you risen again. Oh, yeah, you told us before. Oh my goodness, this is what it means. This is amazing, right? And the Holy Spirit come and show to them, explain to them, and they could go through the journey. And you know what they did? They go through all sorts of ordeals and hardship and persecution and martyrdom. And they are not afraid anymore. The day before Jesus was, I mean, the day, the night that Jesus was caught, like uh, captured. But what happened? The Peter ran away, disciples ran away because they were afraid, right? But after resurrection, the fear is gone because death has no power over them anymore. Now, my friend, one way that you and I can actually overcome the fear, anything that happens in our life is this truth. Everybody says truth. Truth, you should know the truth. And truth will set you free. Will set you free. Do not, do not let the, let your emotion, let your circumstance, let what you see govern you, lead you, dominate you. Let truth guide you, lead you. It's not about how you feel today. It's not about what you see around you. It's not about what you've done before. But you have to come back to the Bible and understand. Understand what Jesus has done for, for you and me. So there's a Korean saying. Do you know that? Have you heard that term? Right? For Korea. I'm sorry, Chinese. Are here. That, that basically means, you know, what the worst thing can happen is death. What, what can happen, right? So you, you become that bold person because, yeah, you know what? I count the worst. What's the worst? Death, all right. That's all right. I can take that. And you go in and do things, right? That's the typical Korean male thing to do, right? But you know, they're all liars because they are afraid of death. Everybody's afraid of that, man. I never knew that I would be that chicken until I have needle on my, in my arms or before my surgery. Like, ah, there's a needle coming into my body. I thought I was quite a tough guy, right? But nobody, nobody is actually immune to the pain and the fear, you know, because of this fear of unknown after death. You should know how to overcome these terrible things around you through truth. The Bible says this in Corinthians 4, 7 to 10. Can you read it together? One, two, go. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in many ways, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifest in our bodies.
I'm sure I talked about this before, but I think one of the good examples that I always share is my personal journey when I actually encounter my, my emotional distress and my emotional disorder. That they caused by my closest friend, my best friend died uh, from construction accident when I was uh, like, I think 1920, yeah, that, that age, early age. But that's when I actually uh, started to go out with my wife first time. You know, I was always a positive guy, but when I went went back to Korea and then saw this dead body, my I think he's like my brother because my two brothers are older and they're twins. They're always kind of together. They, I feel like I never had a brother. I mean, this honest my my kind of bitterness that I grew up with all my life, right? You know, but this 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 boy is uh is my my like a brother. You know, if I want to go back to Korea, I would go back for him. One day I got a call, another friend said, "Hey, Younghwa died." Oh my goodness, what do you mean? I just talked to him on the phone a few days ago. No, no, he died in a con con construction accident. Next day, I picked, I got the ticket and went over there and saw his dad, his body there. And I didn't know that how much it would influence me. And I tried to overcome it, tried to suppress it, and came back home and they got even married. I went to Bible college. I was continuing my life. And I realized one day that sadness, that grievousness was not properly dealt with. And it was killing me. One day I woke up thinking about how I'm going to die. Thinking about I don't want to live anymore. I don't know. This is so weird thoughts in my head. I have a beautiful wife just got married. I have a church that loves me. And I, everything going well. But I was wrestling with this thought that I am not allowed to be happy. It's so dark. Even the pastors can go through that. And to be honest, for a Korean church pastor, it's uh, something that you should never talk about it. Not alone on the pulpit, not even to any individual. But the day I just couldn't deal with it anymore. My wife actually says, honey, I think you got a depression. You got to deal with it. Which is terrible because I was doing damage on her as well. I think that's what that does. It? It's not just influencing you, but also influencing someone sitting next to you. And my emotional disorder was getting too much. So I went to see the psychiatrist. I had the worst experience ever. You know? He did nothing. He was actually, so, 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 why do you think it happened? And I just pouring my guts out. He was saying, <gasps> he actually yawned before me. It's like, <laughs> and at the end of the day, he gave me the drug. And he just said a one line. I never went back. I never went back. But that one line was still sticking to my head. And I went to Christian council after that. I never took the drug in any way. But the point was, what he said was this. He said, yeah, man, take this drug, you know, and, uh, and I'll come back next week, right? And I want you to know it's not your fault, right? Yeah, go home. <laughs> I came home with angry like I would. <laughs> but what the psychologists were trying to do to me, I think, is he just trying to state the truth. Basically saying, you have no reason to be sad. You have no reason to be depressed. You have to, don't have to think about that because what happened in the past is not your fault. Just truth. He just said the truth. And actually, the therapy works when a person embrace the truth they already know. It's not the truth that they didn't know before. It's actually always in front of them. But the someone who embraced, yeah, that's right. This is what is actually happening. But all this emotional happening, things happening is basically illusion. Makes you think something else. Makes you see something else. But the, all the therapy, all the psychologists trying to make you to see, no, truth is this. Look at the truth. Let the truth lead you, guide you. Let the truth speak louder into your heart than anything else. And that's what the Bible does. Do not let your circumstance, yes, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's surp like suppressing like a, from every side. Your affliction comes in a perplex and uh, you are persecuted in a bad. Remember, they are not going to kill you. They are not going to kill you. They are not going to be end of you. Because why? Empty tomb. Jesus rose again and Jesus saying that I know what you are going through in your life. You will be persecuted, but look at me. I rose again and the victory is yours. Live by the truth and truth will set you free. 
Do not wait for your emotion to come back. I will come, I will do. When I feel like to do it, this never, that's a lies of the enemy. What you do need to do is that you need to declare the truth first. One of the things that I had because of the depression that I went through is still lingering. That I, trust me, it never just completely goes away. There are moments I wake up, feel depressed for any reason. Because I have a beautiful church, I have a beautiful children and all that. But the deception coming into my head. And what do I do? I don't wait for my emotion to come back. I declare it. Honestly, I say in my shower, that's the best place to do it. Because I'm so naked you know, and no one is hearing it. And I say, in Jesus' name, I will be happy today. And sing along. I just shout out and I shout someone's name. That's I love somebody. Sometimes I just, you know, I just say that. And she comes home, comes to me. Oh, yeah, honey. No, 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 there's nothing. And I just say something that I know in my heart that is so truth. What is truth to us today? What is truth to us today? That every can fall off, everything can fall apart in your in your life, right? I can tell you, you get, you can lose everything. Hey, right? that happens. Your your marriage, your even what was your health or your business and all that. But what is the truth in all this? Jesus conquered the death, and He rose again, and you have a place to go, and He loves you through Jesus Christ. Can you say Amen? That's the truth. Say it. Declare it, live it, live by it, pursue it, and you will not be afraid because at the end of the day, what is going to happen? Death? <laughs> so be it. Who cares? I will die if I need to die. But I will choose to be happy today because of Jesus Christ. So I'll tell you today, church, please smile. Please smile. <laughs> In Jesus' name. If you see off, don't feel like smiling. No. That's the lies of the enemy. That's just your personality. Not really. You need to know the truth before your personality. As I said, you can be sad yesterday. All right. You're allowed to be sad tomorrow, but not today. Today. Or oh, any day, but today. Today is the day Jesus rose again. You are not allowed to be sad. You are not allowed to be defeated. Amen. You are not allowed to walk around and feel like that. You got nothing in this. You got everything in Jesus. That's what we're going to do today. Amen. Let's pray.